Direction finding is the ability to triangulate a remote radio station. You can use this to find all kinds of things, something local in your town, maybe a radio station that's not far off. What if I told you today I'm going to show you how to triangulate just about any radio station on the planet? It could be a broadcast station, it could be a number station, or maybe your favorite jammer on the 80 meter net that you listen to and participate in. All it's going to take to do this is know how to navigate to a website and some simple controls to make it work and it is an absolute awesome thing that the developers of this have created for amateur radio. If you enjoy how-to videos like these please click the thumbs up and consider subscribing because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right let me show you how this is done. So our journey begins easily enough at KiwiSDR.com. If you scroll a little bit down here to listen live, you'll see something that says map. If you click on the map, you will get an overlay of the world and you can kind of pick your location, right? So the idea here is if you, if you have a thought on where the signal is that you're trying to pick up, you know, if it's in the continental US, you might pick a couple of these stations. We're going to make this real easy on the system, and, and you can experiment with this to your heart's content. But uh, I'm going to pick uh, this Salt Lake City. We'll go to the Northern Utah Web SDR and bring that up. We're going to make it real easy. We're going to go to WWV, so 10,000 or 10 megahertz. Very pronounced audio. Everybody should be familiar with uh, WWV. It transmits 24 hours a day, and it's pretty unmistakable. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to the lower right-hand corner where it says Extension, and we're going to select TDOA. It's going to give us a new window of control. First, I'm going to mute this for a second. You just know it's running in the background. First, we're going to see a map above here and we're going to see a list of empty fields on the left hand side here so what we need to do is we're trying to find this signal so I'm going to keep it to the US um, and what I'll do quite simply is I'll pick a, I'll pick a station over here you're looking for the ones that are blue don't pick one that's green then I'm going to go over here and grab one and you notice as I'm doing it it's filling out this left hand side so I'll grab one in Texas and I'll grab one in California and uh, let's grab one in Canada. Okay, and so last one, since I, let's pretend I don't know where the station is. I'll pick one way over here. What is this, Virginia? Yeah, Virginia. Okay, so I filled out my list, picking some stations just kind of all over the place around the continental United States. I'm going to head and click the button on the right-hand side for IQ. That's the mode of operation. You see the yellow bar above is centered directly on 10 megahertz, which is WWV. Now I'm going to click Submit on the lower left-hand side, which will start sampling audio off of all the web SDRs. All six of those web SDRs is going to take a sample of transmitted audio, and then it's going to begin running an algorithm on it. And that algorithm will hopefully determine where when combined and when all compared against each other, where the SDR or the software believes the transmitting station is that we're trying to target. So you can use this for all kinds of different situations. Obviously, um, if you're on HF and there's somebody who's giving you a hard time and they like to talk for as long as it takes to take a sample, you can use this technology to figure out where they're at or uh, more often what they're doing with this uh, feature is they're looking up where number stations are which I think is a fantastic way to find um, interesting locations for number stations so now the algorithm is running we see it on the lower left hand side here a little spinning circle arrow thing and boom we got a hit and it updates the map at the top and so where do we think that is so let's zoom in real close here. It's a little dark because the uh, day-night cycle is on. I turned off the day-night cycle. That seems to help extensively. So we are right outside Fort Collins, Colorado, 
and it believes the station is at 40 degrees um, longitude, latitude, negative 105.40. So we're going to be somewhere around this area is where it believes it is. Now, that could be some uh, breakup of where, you know, if we just search for WWV here or NIST. Let's see where it shows NIST as. So there's the NIST radio station, WWB, or sorry, WWV. And so it's a bit outside. It missed it a little bit. So here's where NIST is located. And the SDR believes that it's somewhere around here uh, in the around Highway 34, which you can see right here. <clears throat> so compare and contrast the two. Uh, Fort Collins is right here. NIST is, or I'm sorry, NIST is in Fort Collins, and where it thinks it found it is just off of it a little bit. That could be because of this mountain that's stopping um, where the signal is coming from. If you now know the location, and here are the stations we use to sample, we could potentially pick another group of uh, SDRs to narrow that down even further until we got an exact match. And what does that look like? Right, well, so now I'm going to restart this, and we're going to see if we can narrow it in. So I'm going to click these scissors icons on all these guys and clear them out. So we know it's outside of Fort Collins. So why don't we just see how many of these Colorado stations we can use? Oh, there's two. Okay, great. We'll use this other one too. Boom. All right. So we have two Colorado stations. It seemed like it was maybe getting obstructed by that mountain. So let's pick something that can get it from over here and another one over here so that's four and is there anybody to the north yeah we can use this one in Michigan and anything up north yeah let's grab this Canadian station nope oh, we got a no response okay I was waiting to show you this so you're often gonna get something that says no response or no GPS timestamp so that can happen so just remove them from your list and uh, find some more so we'll get one that's way up of the north a bit and maybe one from the south here in Lubbock. Okay, we got another th six good stations. We're gonna click submit again. And sampling, sampling, sampling. Okay, good. Oh, see, that's <laughs> that's the other thing that'll happen. It'll start sampling and then it'll fall off in you. So we'll get rid of that one and maybe we'll grab this guy. Okay, now we got six again. Let's see how that goes. and we are sampling again so we've uh we've adjusted which listening stations that we wanted to use to hopefully find a better triangulation and really it's more than triangulation because you've got six different stations that are all taking a sample and recording and running the algorithm against those samples depending on what they think the location is and then they're kind of compared together so you saw we were here the last time let's get zoomed in Let's see if we get a little bit closer this time. Ah, we actually lost. Where is it? We weren't we up in here? Yeah, Fort Collins is right up here. Interesting. So now it thinks, let's let's see the heat map. So now it thinks it's much further south. So maybe having that N0 EMP was was not a good idea. So maybe we'll remove N0 EMP and we'll take something else maybe this Dallas station add that in and we'll do it again you get the idea at this point I'll go ahead and fast forward and show you what I come up with alright well we last left our friends we had somewhere about right here selected um, from the last run which is totally wrong totally false positive so we've selected different stations and we are running the algorithm again let's see if it gets closer to Fort Collins which is further north of where its last hit was so we're outside of Fort Collins again yeah so it looks like it's getting stuck um, unless I'm wrong let's see is it the same location alright so it, it got lost a little bit but it's still pretty accurate as far as HF is considered because if you consider what we're doing with HF right we're using the ionosphere to get our signal out 
Uh, this works extremely well with ground wave. So if you have a listening station or maybe there's another person in your area that has a listening station and the person is causing trouble um, and they're, they're local to you, possibly ground wave, then you'd be able to sniff them out really, really easily. I thought WWV would be an easy one. Uh, it looks like it's not because actually WWV is, is around this area. At least that's my understanding. If we, um, if we look here, it's just north of Fort Collins, and I believe you can see that when you, when you zoom in a bit. We should be able to see it. Yeah, so there's WWVB and there's the WWV station for NIST. Uh, obviously, we're getting shown something that is more akin to 34s right here. So it's off the mark a little bit, but still ridiculously close for going from these areas here uh, all across the country and being able to get into relatively close range so you could adjust this as you needed to in fact we could probably just redo it um, with just the stations that are um, in Colorado why don't we try that so we've got two in Fort Collins we got this guy and we got another guy and we got that guy so there's three out oh, no response from that guy so we can get rid of him Uh, we don't have to go that far. We can grab another one that's relatively close. So we'll just run with four really quick and see if we can get it. Now we're getting in real close, at least hopefully much closer. Okay, we got much closer that time by using the local Fort Collins station. And we're in Fort Collins now, but I don't know that we're directly on the location. If I click here. So that looks like a suburb. And again, if we look at where WWV is, it's off of the 25 and the 1 here. So, okay, so it's right around here. Yep, right next to this body of water. So it's it's right around this spot. So let's see, I'll keep my cursor on it. So that's probably within 20 miles, give or take. That's not bad. You can then narrow that down if you wanted to even further. If you actually uh, were geographically in the same location as this individual, like you think it was somebody relatively close to you, you could DF them at that point on your own. So we just went from... We didn't know where that signal was coming from at the continental U.S. level. We narrowed it down to Fort Collins, Colorado, and then narrowed it down even further. And it would probably take you 10 minutes to do this if you weren't trying to make a video. So that's all there is to it. I hope this was pretty easy and useful. I found this absolutely fascinating when I discovered this. Uh, and it was really thanks to the DX commander. We were on his live stream, and he was getting some QRM. And he had some people that were actually doing this in parallel while he was doing his live stream. And I, I didn't understand what he was doing. He's like, oh, they're, they're using Kiwi, D, um, Kiwi SDR to direction find where this, where this person's at. And I went, really? So that led me down the rabbit hole doing a little Googling. And about 10 minutes later, I was doing it myself. And I was using the SWR or the SDRs that are in the UK to try and help out. So if, you, if you're actually in the UK, this is an incredibly useful tool because there are so many stations in and around Europe. You know, the UK is kind of a tiny place, and boom, there's how many are just in that geographic space. So really easy to DF people if you are outside of the UK or in Europe or whatever. Pretty easy to do it that way. So, you know, have fun with this. This is really, really cool stuff. This is exactly what SDRs were you know, kind of created to do. We're at that point now where we can do some really amazing stuff. I'm going to see if I can find some of the um, the old time jammers that are on 80 meters and see if I can maybe uh, put my finger on where they're at. I don't know where they actually are, so I, I'm not really going to be positive, but I'm going to try and see what I can find. So I hope that was helpful. I definitely find this an awesome, awesome tool to have in your arsenal of skills and knowledge in amateur radio. Kiwi SDR is super cool. The link is in the description for um, everything you need to get started. And really, you just have to add a couple of stations after you turn the mode on and click Submit. And as long as they're sampling, you're good to go. This is a really cool tool. I really encourage everybody to try this. 
pointed out a local radio frequency station, something on AM. And remember to hop on those SDRs as you're working with them, and you can click something to listen to them. So as long as you can hear that station, you're pretty much good to go. Please tell me what you think of this in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback when it's anything related to the videos that I put out or anything you're curious about knowing about. But specifically, I'm curious if you try this and what your results are. So please check it out. All right, that's it for me today. I'll talk to you later. Seven threes. See ya.